let's see, we're going to move up. My man, Sprites and Bites! You asked three questions. And I'm giving you the three-question fisting action. If you guys haven't noticed, in real life, I am so NC-17, it is fucking ridiculous. This is one of those videos that I don't upload to RetroWare, or Screw Attack or Blister Thumbs. Alright, your first question, what's the one game you hate, yet you'd still recommend to people, and why? Well, the club. It's dumb fun. Get a six-pack and a couple friends together, and just go to town and be dumb. Pretty much, that's all. It, it's just such a easy mechanic, it's easy gameplay, but still, it, it, it's quite fun to play and try to beat your friends and whatnot in it. It's thoroughly enjoyable in that aspect. If you try to take it as a real game with real things, <laughs> then you're going to miss the point. And your typical, uh, what two games would you mash together to make a whole new game, and how would you play it? This is weird. It's probably been done already. I mean, that's what I think. Uh, take the zombie aspect of the Call of Duty games, the, the Treyarch Call of Duty with the zombies, where you're building fortifications and defending it. Mix it with SimCity. And this is what I say. By night, you're defending yourselves against the zombies. By day, you're actually trying to build fortifications and get supplies and ammo and food so you can stay hungry. So you have to, you know, kind of sort of build resources, like real-time strategy. And then at night, once that happens, you have to go back and forth and defend the base, so to speak, against the zombies that always come out at night. It, you know, it would play like Call of Duty Zombies at night, and then at day, it would kind of play like a mix of SimCity and ActRaiser. You know, where you have to go out and collect resources. So you can further build better fortifications and make sure your people are fed and not angry and you have to control riots and stuff like that and there's the whole political aspect of the town and whatnot. So that's what I would combine. Two games to make a lovely baby of zombie sim city. And finally, you asked eggs and bacon or tuna and sweet corn. Eggs and bacon. Uh, <laughs> bacon, 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 bacon. Replace the eggs with bacon and you have bacon on bacon and that's a bacon love in action that I would bake the bacon on. <laughs> Thank you for the questions, by the way, guys. Game Storm. Haven't played an RPG in so long. I, I don't have time either. I discovered that. And I discovered that a few years ago when I actually uh, wrote a little column on, and I put it on my Facebook page, which I'm going to link right here. It was called Sensible Grinding in Gaming. And basically, it just alludes to the fact that as I'm getting older, I can no longer grind out all the epic gear and stuff and stuff. I just can no longer do that. And it goes into the fact that, you know, at the time I had a full time job, I was working my tail off, coming home, and you know, if I want to have a social life or any interaction, I can't do that anymore. So what is my favorite movie? I don't know if you can see it. Dawn of the Dead is my favorite movie of all time. It's a toss-up, man. Uh, you know, I love Jackass. I love Jackass movies. I own, like, all the Jackass TV stuff. I own all the movies, including 3.5. I own two CKY videos. Like, I'm a huge Jackass fan. And that's my pick-me-up movie. But my favorite movie of all time that I can actually watch ad nauseum... Dawn of the Dead. But this Dawn of the Dead is the uh, Ultimate Edition that I got for $4 at GameStop when they sold CDs, DVDs back then. Somebody traded in, put it in as the Day of the Dead edition. This one's a little different. I have my New York Zombie Walk, signed by George Romero. He is still my favorite director of all time, and I will support all of his movies to my dying breath. <laughs> I can sense, I can see the faults in some of his movies, no doubt. Um, Land of the Dead was a little bit of a disappointment for me. I like what he's able to do now, and I want to see what the next zombie movie he does is. Because um, when I went to this premiere, a question was asked of him uh, about going truly independent. He's like, the, the ability that I have now is something I've never been able to do before, and that's create a world. All, of his, all the zombie movies, the four, four, Night, Dawn, Day, and Land, took place ten years or so in between each other. They almost reference some things, but they don't reference... They're not in the same world, he was saying. 
Whereas once uh, survival, I mean, no, uh, Diary of the Dead hit, he can he was actually able to create a world where, um, in one scene, you see this these military guys take over the bus. Spoilers, and the next he's the. The military is only, that military troop is only in the movie for three minutes, if that. The whole next movie, Survival, is based off that military troop immediately after hijacking the bus. That's what he wants to create. And he said something along the lines of he had two more ideas in mind. Uh, continuing, I think, the uh, army troop uh, storyline. And then um, following the girl and the bus in the first movie in Diary, and seeing what happened to her when she tried to go home. So, I appreciate what he's trying to do. He's trying to create a cohesive world, something he's never been able to do before. He's making movies now how he wants to make them. So, I appreciate him, and I've always appreciated his artistic qualities. I, and I can see all the social commentaries in every single one of his movies. They're zombie-based, yeah, but there's some deep-lying shit in there that you have to understand. You also asked, what is my favorite console? My favorite console is the PlayStation 1. The PlayStation 1, I know. Duh, super nice. No. PlayStation 1 has very sentimental value to me because I had gotten out of playing video games a lot. And it, it had been like, like a couple of years since I played video games. And then literally Resident Evil 1 on... PlayStation 1 came out, and Metal Gear Solid 1. I picked up those two games, and curtains. I was addicted to video games again. Metal Gear 1 more so than Resident Evil 1. Uh, I played Metal Gear 1 to the point where I could have legitimately beat the game in an hour. I played the game that damn much. Uh, I wish I took speedruns of it back then, but hey, we're talking, you know, over 10 years ago. I didn't know these things. <laughs> I could probably still pop it in today and still at least do some kick-assery in it, but it would take me a while to get to that point. But PlayStation 1, because it got me back into gaming. It Then, you know, the Final Fantasy 8 and 9 happened, and boom, gamer again. So, thank you, GameStorm. For that, Gary, by the way, for the comment and the questions. And I hope you appreciated the answers, because I did. The Gamer Emporium asked a few questions. The first one, do I do game trades? Not really. I don't do game trades more so because I don't have any spares of anything. I might have to slim the collection down significantly in the next year or so. But then I would be open to game trades and whatnot. Uh, I tend, I you know, I tend not to buy too many duplicates unless I come across this huge lot. And it's been a while since I've come across a huge lot, so to speak. Uh, how long have I been collecting video games? Well, basically on and off since the PlayStation One era. Uh, I've sold and rebought so many collections; it's been ridiculous. Um, I've been retro collecting for about eight years on and off, and maybe six and a half years of those, six and a half years of those, I wasn't retro collecting. <laughs> Basically, my all my Atari stuff was bought over one summer eight years ago, and then I forgot about it. So, eight, nine years ago, and I forgot about it. I bought a bunch of NES games, and funny story, my bass player actually sold them on me, because we were playing at his house. That was a fun conversation I had to have with him. Technically, I still own his Mario 64, because that's what he got with it. Uh, with or without the goatee, your preference. With. Uh, I like me some goatee action. I can't grow any of it here anymore, so I might as well grow it here. <laughs> and I re and I shaved it, um, I, you know, in November, only December, only because I'd had it for 10 years. I, I'd had it for 10 years, and I, I wanted to see how I looked without it. I do not like, not, I do not like being clean shaven. <laughs> that much is certain. Do I think bald is beautiful? Well, I have to. <laughs> I have no... No. I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, up until I shaved my head, uh, and before it started fading out, as you can tell, from here to here, nothing grows. It's barren. It's barren like a bad crop. But, 
up, you know, before then, I had very long hair. Uh, it was past my shoulders, and I had this Charlie Brown patch up. It was, it was bad. I don't like to admit that. But I did. But before all that started fading out, I actually did have, for a lot of years, hair down to my ass. I love long hair. What can I say? I think I look a lot better with long hair, personally speaking, than I do bald. But I'm lucky because I can rock the bald out pretty good. I know a couple friends that have tried and should never, ever take the pick to their head ever again. Not for nothing. Sometimes bald ain't for you. Thankfully, it is for me, because I had no other choice in the matter. And why am I awkward in social situations? Well, I hope the last 32-some-odd minutes of it have proven why I'm awkward in social situations. I am not the guy that you want to meet your normal-ish friends to. Uh, you don't want, I don't want to be brought to a party where it's just a bunch of normal people going, Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm not... And I'm sitting here going, like... Well, look at some of the Rocky Horror pre-shows, and the things that come out of my mouth generally, for the most part, aren't scripted. Uh, that's me being me. <laughs> or my friend who writes it, Tyler, knowing fully well what I would say in that particular situation. So, I'm a very NC-17 rated guy, and I do tend to pull it in and rein it in a little bit for the YouTube audience. I don't think YouTube appro would appreciate <laughs> some of the things that I have to say. Um... Or do. I mean, the, the Attack of the Movies 3D review, that is my style of humor right there. And it's got my favorite joke I've written <laughs> in a year. Um, that type of crazy, you know, it's crazy. Like the kid who used to eat his dog's hair and his, and his uh, G.I. Joe and then two days later shit Chewbacca out. Yeah, that type of crazy. That, that's a killer line. I, I so want to use that one of my movies that I do. Other than a game review. Um, no more questions. Uh, I'm going to check my email real quick. Nope, that is it. Uh, basically, thank you guys for this 33-minute, uh, it's probably going to be split into two parts, Q&A session. That is me being me. Uh, as always, this is Dahmer's Cool Stuff. Comment, rate, subscribe. Boom. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I really do. Thank you for all the submissions. And remember, if you think I missed something, leave a comment down in this video or in part two or in part one or whatever saying, hey, the, answer this, and I'll make a part three or something like that. This is Dahmer's Cool Stuff, and as always, do good gaming. And don't drink the yellow snow. I fucked that up.